Well, what do you think is going on? What is Tom Watson playing at? They've had several years to come up with some policy differences with uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, they had uh, the Owen Smith the elect- uh, leadership election campaign, during which they didn't dare articulate policy differences with Jeremy Corbyn. They didn't dare come up with policy differences during the snap election. They thought that by leaking the manifesto, they were going to, you know, mock the uh, Corbyn's policies and just show up what an extremist he was. Turns out they were rather popular. So after that, they haven't been able to articulate any policy dif- disagreements. Look, I think we should um, be very wary of any anything that suggests overestimating Tom Watson's abilities. Um, he was good in his time, as Morrissey sang. Um, he was um, a very um, uh, adept parliamentary manoeuvrer and wrangler. He was good at twisting arms. He um, engineered the downfall of Tony Blair. We can't, um, you know... Uh, we can't thank him enough for that. Right, exactly. He, he did the right thing. Um, uh, obviously, not necessarily for the right reasons. <laughs> but, um, you know, he, he ensured that uh, uh, Blair stepped down when he was becoming, you know, a liability um uh, but he's had always that very narrow repertoire of backstage maneuverings um and politically his strategy has become a disaster so of course we know that historically he uh, positions himself on the right wing of new labor so and what, what i mean by that i suppose i should say he positions himself on the uh, authoritarian nationalist wing mm-hmm. right not the cosmopolitan open-ended sort of internationalist wing um and not particularly socially liberal either so when he was ri- running liam burns campaign uh, and uh uh, they defined themselves mainly by running against the Lib Dem and portraying the Lib Dem as drips who were soft on asylum seekers, soft yeah. on drugs, soft on teen gangs, soft so, on immigrants. So this was in the Hodge Hill by-election in 2004. The The campaign leaflet read, Labour is on your side, the, li- the Lib Dems are on the side of failed asylum seekers. Yeah. Uh, he later took responsibility for that for that very leaflet. He sort of apologised, but I mean... Well, to be fair, he never stopped. I mean, look at uh, his involvement in Sean Simon's um, West Midlands mayoral campaign. Catastrophic mayoral campaign. I mean, Labour should have walked that election and they lost uh, to a a dismal Tory. And Sean Timons is, uh, you know, a bit of an idiot and always has been. He was back in the day when he was, I think, uh, some sort of student activist, uh, Blairite. But um, he ran on the basis of take, uh, what was it, take back control, the Brexit slogan. um, And, uh, you know, everything, it was, it was, um, the whole literature was designed on a Brexit basis. Mm -hmm. I think Watson also had some involvement in the um, pretty awful uh, Stoke by-election campaign uh, where it was uh, mm-hmm. run with um, you know the English nationalist motifs and you know we're gonna we're gonna bring back the mills uh, and uh, you know go back to the way it used to be uh, before all those uh, people came over so um, I mean obviously that was insinuated they didn't actually say that but um, uh, so I, I think Watson um, is um, an adherent of a political strategy that has been shown to fail time after time and in fact has m- contributed quite significantly to Labour's serious electoral decline after 1997. Okay, um, in the aftermath of the snap election, Tom Watson was one of the few people to put his, you know, uh, put his neck out, um, along with Gloria De Piero and Phil Wilson and a few others. And the interesting thing about all these people is that though they don't come from different wings of New Labour, um, so Phil Wilson is uh, what's it, uh, a leader of Open Britain, uh, so it's a mm. Remain coalition, but Phil Wilson is also a, a, a Blairite uh, who wants to get tough on immigration. Yeah. So it's one of these things where, well, it's it's non-EU immigration that's the problem, you know, that kind of he thing. He also writes, ter- I remember after the 2017 general election, he had a a fairly poorly researched piece which said that Labour have abandoned uh, the working class because yeah. he was looking at those constituents that, that have the traditional white working class in them, completely ignoring and invisibilizing uh, anyone who are on low incomes living in cities. Well, so, so in response to that, I remember looking up where, because that was based on where Labour did the worst was in seats with the highest white working class mm-hmm. uh, or traditional working class in a sort of Goldthorpe sense uh, seats. Uh, but if you actually looked it up, the 20 seats with the most... 
I think kids on free school meals, about 18 of them voted Labour. So it's, it's, it's a really warped view of class, which means that you, you say Labour is meant to serve the traditional working class. And if we get votes from black and brown people in cities, no, that's kind of incidental. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, also, I, I think this <laughs> definition of class is just awful. It's, it's rooted in uh, a kind of culturalist nostalgia. It has nothing to do with real, any sociologically realistic definition of class relations. But uh, that, beside the point, I mean, uh, I was about to refer to the article that you're just describing because uh, it was mm. one of a series by Watson, Piero, and a few others. Um and uh, they all represented a socially and nationally conservative um, response to Corbynism. And basically the argument was, uh, crucially, now that we've had this uh, stunning success, thanks to Jeremy Corbyn, uh, we, <laughs> we feel that uh, we now need to broaden our appeal and uh, slightly modify our agenda so that we can reach out to the C2s, um, sort of who... Uh, a slightly semi-skilled working class voters according to this um, schema uh, based in uh, small towns and suburbs and so on and the argument was that the reason why they hadn't been won over was because uh, Labour was too lefty on things like national security and immigration so it needed to wave the flag more so this is what I think Tom Watson wants um, in terms of his, so that's, I mean, in terms of his actual concrete politics, that doesn't mean that that's the same as what he can actually uh, mm -hmm. deliver in terms of a Labour leadership and so on. But I think that would be clearly what he would be um, pushing. Um, what he wants, obviously, is to um, provide some sort of organised framework in which the um, currently marginal um, but nonetheless powerful forces of the labour right can uh, develop some sort of some sort of common sense among themselves um, because I know I think they know that they can't get rid of Corbyn in the here and now but I think they also know that um, nothing is guaranteed in politics and uh, some years of pressure and attrition um, and you know maybe some dis, uh, disaffection over Brexit or some other issue, will start to open up some of the uh, pro corbyn membership to more right-wing arguments. Um, mm, so you least, think it's about winning over the membership to some degree? Well, at some, well look, historically, labor rights never been particularly good uh, at working mm. with the membership. So, for example, you know, the labor right in the 1980s, almost exclusively worked through the union bureaucracy and the parliamentary groups um, until eventually they realised they needed to reach out to the union, uh, student union branches, they needed to reach out to constituency branches and so on. But to be honest, uh, demoralisation did a lot of their work for them so that when they finally did get around to talking to the members, uh, they had uh, they had Thatcher to thank for winning the members over for them. Um, and I guess that, um, but I think they do want to talk to the members. I just think they can't help aggrandizing, uh, sort of, um, first of all, aggrandizing their traditional um, concerns and obsessions, but also aggravating, you know, the average member. Mm. It just, I mean, it, it's kind of gratuitous um, the way that Tom Watson intervenes. Um, for example, that um, a videoed statement he made. There were many odd things about that, um, but the oddest thing I thought was that his whining about identity politics. I mean, he was just he was talking about a split that occurred, which, according to him and others, was motivated in large part by Brexit and racism, anti-Semitism, and he's complaining that um, and identity politics has caused all this, uh, all this. Um, uh, anti-Semitism. Is that what he means? What does he mean? Does anybody know what he means? Yeah, I f well, when I read, th well, I mean, there was the, the, the very dark reading of it, potentially true, which is that it's, it's that the reason there's an anti-Semitism problem is because people have sided with Muslims. I mean, that was what some people were saying on Twitter. I don't know if that's what you should read into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other idea is, is that uh, one of the reasons for the level of the degree of hostility uh, in within Labour because a lot of this is about civility, right? It's that people are taking politics somewhat too seriously and getting too angry at their MPs. Uh, is because people are are dogmatically wedded to 
to their faction in the party. So to Corbynism, I'm a Corbynite and everyone else is uh, evil, I suppose. Would, 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 melt. It's, it's potentially what he's pointing to. I don't know. I don't want to put my yeah. myself in his shoes. I mean, in a way, I think by talking about his ideas, we're giving him too much credit. Um, I was, Tom Watson has never appeared to me as an ideas man. Um, and I think what's interesting about this this grouping he's made is that he's trying to position it as a, sh- a, a, a sort of talking shop for Labour MPs on the backbenches to start to pull their weight and to start to move Labour policy in a particular direction. But they still haven't come up with any particular idea. So the one thing they say is, look, we're, we're, we back all the economics. This is obviously TIG, the independent group have gone down a bit of a more sort of Blairite, new labour we don't want to nationalise stuff. But Tom Watson, they've said, we're basically fine with the economics. Uh, we're going to say some sort of buzzwords about a new digital economy, mm-hmm. um, even though, I mean, I'm sure there's no sort of factional barrier to them doing that uh, within the approved mechanisms. In fact, it's been Tom Watson's job for the last three years and he hasn't done anything. Uh, but besides, <laughs> moving on from that, uh, they've said it's about foreign policy because what they've tried to see as a wedge issue basically between Corbyn and the electorate is the idea that everyone now loves Corbyn's economics, but his foreign policy is a bit wacky, a bit anti-NATO, a bit anti-nuclear. And so we're going to shift the Labour Party in that direction. The problem is... Corbyn's already conceded on all of those things. So, I mean, are they going to be a lobbying group for Trident? Because we're already pro-Trident. Are they going to be a lobbying group for staying in NATO? Because we're already staying in NATO. I mean, it's it's as if they're pitching themselves against the Labour Party from 1983 because they think that some people in the leadership might share those attitudes. But when the people who, who potentially are a bit anti-NATO and are a bit nuclear, which is some of the people in Corbyn's office, probably Corbyn himself, they haven't tried to assert that over the party. So, so the one... The one area they've decided to battle on, or where they're pretending to battle Tom Watson et al, is is an issue on which they've already won. I mean, I think what is going on, I don't think this is about ideas, is, and I think it makes sense, I think it's relatively smart, um, is that they recognise that the one place they have in the Labour Party with some power is on the parliamentary benches. Mm-hmm. Um, they recognise that because they've all sort of had their tails in between their legs since 2017, they haven't really utilised uh, the bargaining power, the leverage uh, they have from that position as they could have done. I think Tom Watson has recognised that if they unite, if they sort of, as as we know on the left, if you, the workers united, I mean, they're not really workers, but, you know, people united have, have more influence. Um, and I think what he's trying to do is gather about 80 MPs who can say, if you don't do X, Y, Z, we'll leave. Um, and the alternative to doing that is them just sort of waiting to individually get picked off um, some of them get picked off in deselection. Some of them know they're never going to get a promotion. And I think what he's saying is, instead of us getting picked off one by one and melting into irrelevance, mm-hmm. let's go out with a big bang, uh, all 80 of us, unless we can wrestle some control back from the party. So I think we'll see an ultimatum at some point to John McDonnell, to Jeremy Corbyn to say, I mean, the ultimatum could be something like call off deselections. Uh, it could be something like put XYZ person into the shadow cabinet or all 80 of us will go at the same time and that would be damaging i mean i think we have to look at it as a as a build-up to coup 2.0 i don't think it's about ideas at all